Hey guys, I'm Phil with Flat Creek Outdoors. Today I am firing up the Cub Cadet mower and getting it ready for spring. I left this outside all winter, which I didn't do the previous year, and obviously it got dirty and yucky from being outside all winter. But much to my surprise, this thing fired right up. I expected the battery to be dead or the fuel that the little bit of fuel that was left in it to be bad and not fire, but anyway. What a machine, just fired right up. So that's good. Today I need to change the oil. I'm right at 100 hours. I'm going into my third season. I've done consistently now about 50 hours a season since I got this. And I figured I'd share with you my thoughts on whether I would buy this mower again if I was in the market for a mower today in 2021. So stick around. So I figured while I was changing the oil, I could tell you a few of the pros and cons that I've learned about this mower and a couple of the issues that I've had with it along the way over the last two years. I've got a bunch of videos of this mower in action on my other channel, Woods Tree Farm, including a full overview, walk around features. Uh, I show numerous videos of it in action, cutting tall grass. I do a 50 hour maintenance video. I took the deck off and I um, showed the rust that was on the bottom, which was actually one of the issues I was going to bring up with you guys in this video and uh, several others. So anyway, I'll drop a link in this video's description to all of those other videos so you can go back and check those out if you're in the market for this mower and you want to check them out. When I bought this mower in 2019, I will have to say it was a little bit of a rushed decision. There is a Cub Cadet dealer on the way home from the farm here drive by their place every single time. There aren't any other independent uh, lawn equipment businesses uh, between here and there. So I kind of just researched the Cub Cadet line, the Cub Cadet line only, and settled on this one largely due to the price, but also due to the fact that this particular model, the ZT2, does get a number of nice upgrades compared to the ZT1. And I cover that more in, um, in my first overview video. But uh, that was really um, what I wanted to share with you is that it was somewhat of an uninformed decision because I didn't compare this mower to any other brands out there. And if I was back in the market today in 2021 for a mower, I would spend a little bit more time and energy doing just that. So if I'm trying to figure out would I buy this mower again in 2021, well, one of the big factors for that is uh, in comparing it to what else is out there. And I know, for example, I've done just a little bit of research online. There is a Spartan dealer nearby. There's a Kubota dealer where I got my tractor is not terribly far away. And then you can get Toro. There's a Toro dealer about, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes away. And you can also get Toro at like... Um, at a couple of the big box stores now, though their line and their selection is limited at the big box. But anyway, point being, what else is out there around this $4,000 price point and how does it compare to this Cub Cadet? Uh, I think there are some strong contenders out there and um, I would definitely want to spend a little bit of time to understand better how those others compare. A little bit of context, we use this mower on our farm primarily. I don't do much residential cutting. The farm is rough. We let the grass get high, too high for this mower more often than not. And uh, all, all that said, we're pretty hard on it. So uh, if I'm in the market for another mower around the same price point, I am definitely considering durability in that, but also comfort because this thing is not very comfortable at all especially compared to some of the other things that I have around here. I have no other experience with zero turns, so I can't really weigh in with how this compares to other things that I've used because I haven't used any. So, uh, you know, there's a little bit of context there, but my, uh, my scope of my opinion is pretty limited here. I know the Toro that's out there, for example, does have some form of suspension. I forget whether it's in the seat or if it's in the frame or something else. But anyway, I know that there could definitely be some more comfortable options out there at this same price point here in 2021. Another consideration for me is definitely going to have to be handling because we have a lot of hills here on the property and I found this mower in particular does not hold the hills very well at all. It definitely doesn't like going downhill and coming to a stop. I've heard that's somewhat of a common thing with zero turns and it definitely doesn't like holding a side slope if you try to go along the slope on the side. Uh, it tends to, the back end tends to skid downhill or bounce downhill and that's an uncomfortable feeling sometimes. So I wonder if some of the other mowers that are out there that compete in the same price range, around $4,000, if they handle any better, that would definitely be something I would like to demo if I was in the market again. 
I do like how easy this is to service. I have that full 50 hour maintenance video on my other channel and there's a link in this video's description. But with that um, oil filter right there on the side and uh, the fill, oil fill right here, piece of cake. Okay, I figured I would just cut this little section over here and then I'll fill you in on a couple issues and problems I've had with this mower over the last two years and I'll give you my final thoughts on whether I would buy this again in 2021. Over the last two years with this mower, there have been a couple issues. The first of which was something that I didn't look at at all when I was buying this mower, and that is the fact that it has two ply tires. Yes, tires are something that are easily upgradable, but out here on the farm where we use it, there's a lot of thorns, there's a lot of things that can poke through those tires. So early on, I had to slime those tires, and since then, I haven't had an issue. Uh, when I put air in the tire today, after it's sitting all winter, one of the tires was a little bit lower than the other, but it was not completely flat. So I might have a really, really, really small leak in one of those tires, but it was still had enough air to roll around just fine. It was not completely flat, like I mentioned. But anyway, if you're going to be using it somewhere where it's rough, I know some of the other mowers that are out there at this price point might have four ply or six ply tires. So that might be something you want to look at. As far as issues go, there's really only one other thing that surprised me with this mower. I'm not going to call it an issue. Maybe it's just the way these mowers are and it's completely fine. But uh, when I took the deck off last year, and there's a video of this on my other channel, I was really surprised by how much rust there was on the underside of the deck. So at that time, I went ahead and sprayed the whole, I, I wire brushed it and I cleaned it as good as I could and I sprayed the whole deck down with... Um, I forget what the product was at the time. I'll put it down here on the screen. But anyway, sprayed the whole thing down, which was supposed to protect it. And I actually haven't had the deck off since then to compare. That'll maybe be a future video. Um, I do have another set of blades here. I haven't even looked at the blades that I used last season. I'm sure they're a little beat up. And um, anyway, I'll do that in another video too, where I'll take the deck off and inspect it, compare it to compare it to what it looked like midway through the season last year, and then probably put a new set of blades on it. Obviously, depending on your conditions, you're going to see more wear depending on like what, what kind of conditions you have. Whether it's like the ground's really uneven and you're hitting the dirt a lot, you're kicking a lot of dirt and sticks and stones up underneath the deck, or if you're in a real sandy environment, that'll increase the wear, I know. So anyway, if you're just using it on a flat lawn and you don't have any of those things, maybe you won't see the same kind of wear that I've seen by using it out here on the farm. The only other issue I've had with this mower, I would say, is my fault. I hit a piece of rebar and I did damage one of the three spindles on the mower deck. And in shopping for a replacement spindle, I realized that the spindles on these mowers are actually the exact same thing on some of the MTD and Craftsman and other uh, inexpensive lawn tractors that you might see at your big box retailer. They're all manufactured by MTD and they apparently share some parts, including the spindles. So even though this is a mower that is more than double some of those other mowers that are out there it uses some of the same components which in my opinion I think they got a little cheap on on that especially for this mower which is supposed to be an upgrade in the ZT series it's not the cheapest ZT mower out there and um, I'm a little disappointed in that one fact uh, other than the damage that was caused by my, by my own account, by usage, by hitting a piece of rebar, which it's not designed to do, uh, nothing else is broken. It has been extremely reliable. It has always started when I wanted it to start, and it seems like it has done everything that we've wanted it to do. So I really have no complaints about kind of the use and reliability of this mower. I'll get to the question that you've all been waiting for. The title of this video, would I buy it again? Well, maybe. And that's not a cop-out answer. I explained earlier that I think I need to do a little bit more research to better understand the other options out there in this market. And, uh, you know, right around that $4,000 price point, you're not into the commercial Pro Series mowers. You're at the high end of residential mowers. Though, 
recently there have been some more residential mowers come on the market in the six, seven thousand dollar range. I would never consider one of those. If I was in that price range, I would absolutely just go ahead and buy a commercial mower that had a lot better bits and pieces on it and was made to hold up a little bit better. But anyway, that's a completely different point. We're down here in the four thousand dollar price range. Would I buy this mower again? I haven't had an issue, and if I did the research and I found that this one was, was kind of the best combination of features for where we use it, which is out here on this 43 acre farm, then yeah, I absolutely would buy it again. I have no issue with the reliability of this machine, the quality of the machine, and the performance of this machine. So I would buy it again, though I wouldn't stop myself at all from doing a little bit more homework and seeing if there's something better out there. Well, I hope this is helpful to you guys if you're in the market for one of these mowers. Like I said, this is my third season. I don't plan on getting rid of it anytime soon. And I'm right at 100 hours. I'll likely put another 50 hours on it this season. And I'll keep you guys posted in future videos of how it's doing. And obviously, if I have any issues or trouble with it in the future, I'll be sure to share that with you as well. So stay tuned here on the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Follow along. We'd love to have you following all of our videos as we do lots of different work out here on our 43-acre farm in Central Virginia. Virginia. That's going to be it for today. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.